Thank you for welcoming us. It's good to be here in this great city. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have come from many places to talk about internet freedom and how the internet enables freedom. I want to first start by thanking the event organizers. Foremost, the foreign ministry of this great country of Sweden, .se, the people who manage one of the most successful top-level domains on the planet. And finally, the development agency, SIDA, which, as a child growing up in some parts of the world, I was a benefactor of their great work. And I thank them for organizing this important conference. Sweden is on the internet map like very few countries. Dr. Tim Berners-Lee just published a few months ago the Web Index. It's a very important index that shows how countries are leveraging the great resource of the internet. And when he compared developing and developed economies, guess who came as number one? Sweden. Sweden is also the number one country in Europe in the enablement of the internet, according to a recent study by the Boston Consulting Group. So this is the most appropriate place for us to have a discussion about the internet. And I want to particularly thank this afternoon, this evening, Danny Ertz, the CEO of .se, who received me at his office this afternoon and shared with me some fantastic ideas and some very impressive best practices about the great work that is done in .se. Thank you, Danny, and thank you to the .se team for the great work you do. I said in the past that the Internet is a free gift for all people. Yes, some countries like the U.S. may have had a bigger hand in creating it. But even the U.S. recognizes that they need and will gift this great resource to the planet. No one organization, no one country, no one government, and no one period can control the Internet. It is a resource for all of us. And we must respect it and govern it in that spirit. Now, that's not easy <laughs> because it hasn't been done before. Our international intergovernmental organizations that have tried very hard to manage resources that cross borders and cross jurisdictions and cross nations, such as the atmosphere and the air, have done a pretty miserable job. It hasn't worked very easily. So when a resource spans the planet and crosses every border, how do we manage it together? This is the conundrum of most people today in government, in civil society, in academia, and in businesses. And the answer to this difficult question is one and only one answer, together, together. In my opening speech, when I started my presidency at ICANN seven months ago, I said, it's not just about multi-stakeholderism, multiple parties coming together to work on an important resource. It's about multi-equal stakeholderism. It's having everyone at the table with an equal voice, participating in the governance of this resource. Let me share with you some numbers. In 2005, there were only 750 million people on the Internet. Of these, 75% were in our developing world here. The prediction is that in 2015, which is around the corner, there will be at least 2 billion people on the Internet. But now here are the statistics. 
more than 70% of them will be in the developing world. The next billion users of the internet are not coming from Malmo or from Omaha. They're coming from the developing world. We have to figure out how to make them part of this. Right now, they are not part of this. We are struggling to include the people of the world in something they deserve, which is how do we together govern the internet. I was in Geneva earlier this week. There were many governments that were trying to figure out how to govern the internet. I will share with you a very brief conversation with a minister of a Latin American country. He told me, Fadi, it's this simple. The internet is very powerful. We are governments. We love power. So the conclusion is we need to control the internet. This was his speech. And I think he was probably the most honest government person because he told me exactly what is going on in government circles. Not all governments are equal. I am not here standing in front of you in this great hall to attack our governments. But there are governments that do not understand multi-stakeholder engagement and governance. It is our job to engage them. We cannot sit in Los Angeles and say, this is the way it works. And so, what is ICANN doing in this new season? I will walk you through three things. First, ICANN is engaging the world. We are changing our posture from a US organization to a global organization. And that's not achieved simply by hiring someone with a brown skin like me. That does not cut it. It means changing the DNA of an organization. It means making ICANN a true global player. So the first thing I did is break ICANN headquarters in three. And ICANN is moving to a model I'm calling the tri-quarters. We're going to be operating every element of our organization from Los Angeles, Istanbul, and Singapore so we can cover the entire world immediately. All hiring in LA is frozen. And I personally, with my wife who's here, we're going to be moving uh, along these hubs all year to show leadership in our commitment to globalizing the core of the ICANN organization. We're changing the DNA of this organization. We are also pushing the internationalized domain names. We are also pushing the new GTLDs because they will provide opportunity for many people to diversify the D domain name system. I am also, as I just invited you, promoting the multi-stakeholder model. When a country like Brazil does something that works, or other countries like New Zealand, we must promote it. They bring government, civil society, and businesses to agree together on country-level internet governance. These are models we must promote. Second thing we're doing is making ICANN grow up and become a global scalable organization. ICANN for too long has been, frankly, a startup in its mentality. This is changing. And lastly, and this is the spirit of your conference, ICANN must embrace it's public responsibility. ICANN cannot be a money collector. ICANN must become a publicly responsible organization. We have a role in enabling many parts of the internet, and it's our job to do it, not just to sit back and collect the change. The new ICANN, the new season, must embrace its responsibility to the public and to the developing world. I want to close by telling you a personal story. I know you're all going to meet to talk about freedom. I have, 
I grew up in places where freedom was not there. I learned the hard way what happens when you speak your mind. I lost many friends who spoke their mind. Freedom, freedom to choose is the most important freedom. And the internet has become the most powerful tool to do so. The most powerful tool to enable people to choose what they want. It's not about democracy. It's about allowing people to choose. Franklin Roosevelt in 1941 said, freedom of want, freedom to worship, freedom of speech, these are the freedoms that matter. And we have a responsibility to enable freedom. So I wish you luck in the next two days. Freedom is close to my heart, close to everyone in the world who's looking for our leadership. So let's be leaders and let's make it free. Thank you.